saddle up your horse as we're off to the Old West on today's episode of The Producer Podcast. Today we're sitting down with the Utah Film Commission to talk about filming in the state, their incentive programs, and much more. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you very much, Derek, for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, maybe to start, just kind of give listeners a little bit of background on yourself and how you came to be working with the Utah Film Commission. Sure. Yeah. So I, prior to working in the Film Commission, I, I worked in the film industry um, at one point, and I started off kind of in the art department, uh, working my whip as a set dresser and did some day playing in the construction department as well. And then I sort of fell into locations. A friend of mine that I'd worked with at another job had um, become a location scout and then a manager and hired me on a show. And I realized that was kind of more my calling. And I did that for, uh, I think six years and worked on, you know, a couple of television shows and some features and commercials and, and one day I got a call from the film commission. They needed somebody to come in and cover for their location scout um, that uh, had been originally an intern and worked his way up. Um, he's, he's currently a, a, a Hollywood location scout. Uh, his name's Tommy Woodard and does some big shows. Um, but anyway, he, he'd been uh, a, he was in the military and uh, was in training for two months and they needed someone to fill in for him. And I got the call because uh, I was the only one that no one had a problem with on the location list. <laughs> At least that's what I was told. <laughs> so um, while I was here, the director uh, left to go uh, take over the North Carolina film office, Aaron Syrett and, um, and Marshall Moore, whose position I'm in now was became the director and that was 16 years ago. Marshall's since moved on. Our director now is uh, Virginia Pierce. Quick plug, she's awesome. And my official position is the uh, production manager for the Utah Film Commission. Just kind of branching off real quick of how, since you have been in the film office uh, so long, like how have you seen the way you guys interact with film productions and stuff change over this period of time, especially with all the new technologies coming out and such. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, you know, when I first started, uh, usually people would call our office if they needed snow or red rock or mountains or lakes or the Bonneville salt flats. And it was always location driven. Um, and now the very first question they ask is what's your incentive program? So that, that's probably the biggest change. Um, and you know, I, happy to talk about the incentive program. And that was, you know, probably the biggest learning curve was just uh, speaking more to that than, you know, the actual locations and, mm -hmm. and our crew base and everything else. I, I mean, all that other stuff's important too, but usually that's the first question is what's your incentive program and do you have funds available? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's like a perfect segue. So yeah, let's jump in and kind of talk about that. Cause sure. obviously every state does it different. You know, some it's an incentive, some it's a rebate, mm -hmm. others do grants. Mm -hmm. So how is mm -hmm. Utah's incentive set up and how does that operate? Yeah. Ours is kind of interesting. So it started off as a cash rebate. I think we started off with about $500,000 back in, I want to say it was 2005. Um, and that's, that grew and then shrank again. And currently we have 1.4 million in the cash rebate program. And then we have what's known as a fully refundable, hundred percent refundable tax incentive, um, as opposed to a transferable one. Um, that's a separate fund, uh, same program and same rules apply. Um, we have 6.79 million in that program. And then, uh, Last year, in our legislative session of 2022, we were granted an additional $12 million for a rural-specific film incentive program. Um, the main requirement of that is the, a project needs to 
spend at least a million dollars in the state and shoot 75% of its principal photography outside of um, our urban centers, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, um, which kind of the, where most of the population is in the state of Utah is along what we call the Wasatch Front, which is Ogden to the north of Salt Lake. Salt Lake, of course, the capital and largest um, population center, and then Provo to the south. And the counties that are considered non-rural um, would be Weber, Davis, Salt Lake, and Utah counties. But the other 25 are, are considered rural. Our minimum spend requirement is 500000 for production to be considered for the incentive program. Okay. Um, and um, from out of state, however, we do have what's known as the Community Film Incentive Program, which is uh, to help foster uh, the creative industry in, in the state and to keep film production here because we realize they can chase incentives outside mm-hmm. of the state and the country. Um, those productions the or that program's minimum spend requirement is 100000 um, up to 500000 for the Community Film Incentive Program. And that's a baseline incentive of 20%, as is our Motion Picture Incentive Program, 20% rebated back on all of your qualified Utah spend, which is any expenditures um, that occur in the state that are of benefit to a Utah tax paying entity, meaning, um, and, and subject to either income, sales and use, or um, corporate tax. So all of the, you know, local hires, all of the, um, say the hotels that you source for your out of state crew or cast, um, all, all of the, you know, vendors that you engage and rent from that are domiciled in the state, all of those um, costs are included in your Utah qualified spend. Okay. Yeah. So it's, and and then if a project is spending a million dollars or more, uh, we have an uplift of 5% that they can uh, gain from either meeting that rural requirement, 75% of their principal photography days while in Utah or in a rural county, or by um, hiring 75% Utah casting crew. Okay. A few, few states to have a hiring requirement. But yeah, that's that's how a project can be approved for an additional 5% on all of their qualified spend. I'm impressed. I did not realize there were so many different like options, I guess. Oh, yeah. In, in Utah, yeah. you know, up here in Iowa, we have just kind of the one main one, and that's what everybody goes for. But yeah, so I guess maybe like uh, with the incentives, what's kind of that application process look like for you guys? Are there just certain times of the year you can apply or can you can apply whenever? That's a, yeah, that's a really great question. We, um, we have monthly application deadlines. A uh, project can apply um, to be considered for the following month um, anytime before the 10th of that, that month. So it usually takes us uh, about a month to review um, the applications, you know, read the scripts, look through the budgets, uh, you know, make sure the, the I's are dotted and the T's crossed, um, that we have everything that we need to move the project forward. Um, we also, each project is reviewed. Uh, we run um, each through kind of a series of metrics to see, um, to give it each project kind of a point system, depending on the you know number of Utah crew hired, what they anticipate their Utah qualified spend to be, you know, whether or not they're going to film in a, a rural area versus, you know, a non-rural area. Um, so we give an extra point or so for the project if it's, you know, Utah for Utah, because we're um, often shot for other places. And, uh, but yeah, it just um, once we have reviewed the project and, and as long as we have funds available, uh, we would move it forward to the governor's, we're under the governor's office of economic opportunity. Um, directly under tourism. And uh, so the official group that uh, reviews the, in, the incentive requests or, and grants them um, is the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunities Board of Directors. So we present the projects that um, 
that have met our criteria to move forward for the incentive and and then they as a body vote on the motion for um for those funds to be allocated by those specific projects um and that always occurs on the second thursday of the following month so it's about okay. a, a one month re review process um but yeah you did mention one thing it's it's that's fund dependent um we operate on a fiscal year from July 1 through June 30th. Um, but we're legally able to start allocating funds and we usually have a queue up for them um, as early as May. Okay. It's uh, dependent on our legislative sessions end date because uh, we have to wait 60 days to, before we can start um, messing with the next year's funding. And, um, and so, April 10th is kind of a key deadline to be considered for, uh, you know, that fiscal year. Mm -hmm. We ask when, a, because we do have limited funds um, and more demand than supply, we do ask the project is within 90 days of the start of their Utah spend at time of approval. Okay. And that can, that can be like, you know, when they're opening an office or hiring their locations team um, or hiring a UPM locally, hopefully. Um, but that's because um, uh, we don't want to have the, the funds tied up for you know, mm -hmm. a, a long period of time and miss out on other opportunities. So then I guess like kind of on that back end, what's that process and like timeline? Because I know sometimes that's that's always a big thing on people's mind is like how long for the rebate or the incentive are we going to have to wait mm -hmm. to to get that back? Yeah, so that's dependent on whether it's the cash rebate or the ca or the tax credit, and it's also dependent on uh, the time of approval for the project too. If a project's approved, say you apply right now, um, and it, it, I'll just use it uh, this August as as a timeline. So, in the project, say applies in August, is approved in September, they shoot uh, going to prep in October, shoot in November. That's kind of like the ideal time, you know, that okay. um, as far as the tax credit's concerned, because the year of approval is what sets the first tax year that that credit is good for. Um, and so, you know, this is currently 2023. So if you're approved in August of 2023 and, you know, you, you spend your money, um, you, you know, say you, you're completing post elsewhere, although we do have post facilities in the state and they are applicable toward the incentive. Um, but say you're, you're doing your post elsewhere and you're, you're done with your Utah qualified spend. Uh, we do have a requirement that the production hires an outside uh, Utah licensed, licensed CPA to do an independent attestation of, of spend. Mm -hmm. It's not a full audit. That's a sample audit. Um, and the cost associated with the audit is applicable toward your Utah spend amount as well. So you get, you know, 20 or 25% back on it. Um, the CPA does their attestation and then submits to our office, our office, along with the governor's office of economic opportunities compliance team um, may have a few questions about, you know, specific um, expenditures or, um, you know, we send out a, a survey to the crew, the cast, and uh, the Utah hired crew cast and, and vendors, as well as the locations, just to make sure there isn't any, there aren't any loose ends or damages or, or uh, unpaid um, crew members. And once we get the results back of that and have had a chance to review the CPA attestation, um, that's typically about a five to six week process. Um, at that point, the production would be production company that's in contract with the state would re, uh, be sent a tax certificate if it was a tax certificate, which would be good for that current tax year. So um, if they did apply and were approved in August, filmed in November, as we've already established with this uh, example, they'd be able to file their taxes in the state of Utah to receive that as a full refund as early as January 1, okay. 2024. Yeah. Now, if it's the cash rebate um, rather than the tax credit um, certificate, they would just receive a check from our Department of Finance. I'm just curious, do the strikes cause any issues? Like if you've gotten the incentive 
you know, now you can't shoot in kind of your window? That's a really great question. Yeah. So we're, we're actually trying to figure that out right now. So, um, you know, it's a, a, in a lot of ways, a force majeure, you know, there's nothing Mm -hmm. you can really do about it. And it's not anything that the production companies that have applied for the incentive and been approved can uh, avoid. And um, so I think we're just kind of waiting to see um, what happens and, you know, and, and hopefully they come to an agreement sooner rather than later. And these productions that are slated to go this fall um, will still have the, the opportunity to do so before weather moves in. Um, if they aren't able to go, I'd imagine that some of them will push to the spring um, and then it'll still be, well, we haven't crossed that road yet. Yeah. <laughs> right across that. So we're not exactly sure if we would be allowing them to hold on to the incentive or if they'd need to reapply. Okay. So, um, we did have two productions that uh, were, were granted waivers um, that are completely independent of the AMPTP. So um, one is uh, just started filming yesterday and the okay. other one is wrapping filming uh, today. So, Maybe moving on here a little bit from sure. the incentives um, and just like looking at the state of Utah as a whole, what are some yeah. unique characteristics or aspects about the state that films can benefit by shooting here instead of, like you mentioned, going somewhere else and faking it for Utah? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. We've been cheated for um, all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a, actually a television series that encouraged it, you know, all over the world called Touched by an Angel that shot here for nine seasons. Um, and, you know, we've been shot for just anywhere you can think of really. But um, we're a great place to do a road movie, um, especially if, you know, your your base is here in Salt Lake and you kind of wagon wheel out of here. You can get a lot of different looks. Okay. Um, we can cheat for, you know, the East Coast. Uh, I mean, basically, we can do everything except for, you know, shoreline, beaches, <laughs> and jungle. <laughs> but everything else I feel pretty confident we can find here, so you know, including like New England looking small towns, uh, you know, big city, Salt Lake City's a, you know, city that's growing exponentially. Um, we can certainly cheat for someplace like Chicago or New York um, or Toronto or um, you name it. Um, there are, you know, it's a, a short drive to get up into our canyons, into our mountains to have, you know, picturesque green lush forests and and uh, lakes um and then heading west from salt lake you're in the uh the great basin desert and um and about an hour and a half from salt lake you have the bonneville salt flats which is very unique and used by some rather large films over the years so i say all that and i didn't i didn't get to the best part which is uh you know down in southern utah we have um, our red rock landscapes, you know, which were um, featured in, you know, the Westerns of the thirties and the forties, fifties uh, gun smoke had a standing set down in Kanab, Utah for, I think they went for something like 19 seasons. It's still kind of standing down there. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, um, you know, the, the red rock um, locations have served as, otherworldly locations as well you know it's mars mm-hmm. or um you know a galaxy quest uh, utilized a, a popular state park called goblin valley uh, for its feature yeah i didn't realize obviously even myself i'm like i think westerns and all that i didn't think about like you know salt lake city being being able to do like the the big city vibe and and some yeah. of those things um and there's some yeah. really cute small towns. We do get a lot of uh, Hallmark and Lifetime channel mm-hmm. cable features, you know, because it's we have beautiful, quaint, small town vibes, um, especially along the Wasatch front and back. Okay. So. so then I guess I'd be curious to know, like, what's one thing that you wish 
more filmmakers knew about your state. Like maybe they might oh, even sure. live in the state of Utah and do film and not really yeah. realize this. Yeah. Um, I think what a lot of people don't realize and even, you know, some of the folks that live and work in the state in the film industry is just how big a crew base we actually have. Um, okay. We've, we've, um, you know, we've had situations where we've had like seven or eight different productions all filming at the same time. And even when I'm like, they're not going to find all their crew, they somehow, you know, even meet the 75% hiring requirement. Wow. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of folks that uh, live in Utah that, that work in the film industry and even coming up in the film industry, you know, especially working on a larger television show, you think you're the only show in town, you know, and mm -hmm. we all work in these individual silos. Um, and it wasn't until I joined the film commission that I realized how many other production companies there are and how many talented crew that we have here in Utah. That's awesome that you have so many there. Um, do you have then like a database or something on like the commission's website that we people do. can access? Yeah. Yeah. We have a crew database. Um, we also have a support services database and we have, I think over 2000 locations listed in our location library as well. Um, and then, you know, we we're here and available for any calls or emails that anybody, uh, you know, if we can help anybody answer any questions or, you know, give them more detail on, you know, cause we do have four seasons here. Um, okay. We definitely this last winter. We definitely had a winter, <laughs> but uh, you know, a beautiful spring and and a long hot summer and and a, a wonderful uh, fall. Um, yeah, we have it all here. Which I know that that's a, something that you know, especially coming from a place like California, that people don't anticipate. Yeah, no. I, I'd just be curious, like since you do have all four seasons, like when does your winter time normally? fall like yeah if i were to so i i'll take this advice i was given from a long time look or a lion producer that called utah home by the name of don chain and his advice on that uh, was he would never schedule um an exterior day without a backup interior location um beyond november 22nd for okay. whatever reason was his uh was his magical date and that typically holds true. So uh, we, you know, we have um, over 13 ski resorts in the state and mm -hmm. a lot of them try and open up for Thanksgiving weekend. Of course, they're, you know, at upper elevations and yeah. get a lot more snow than we do here in the Salt Lake Valley. And of course, we have St. George and Moab to the south, uh, which St. George, I believe, is around 2,500 feet above sea level. And, and of course, at the very southwest bottom of the state. So they have a much more um, agreeable climate down there uh, in the winter. Um, and then, you know, Moab is another filming destination and they, um, I'm not sure their exact elevation, but they, um, and they, they'll sometimes get snow, but it doesn't usually stick around for them because they're a lot okay. more arid down there. Not like we are up here. Good to know. So but if you do need snow, we're a great place for that too. So yeah, our, our temperatures are not quite as extreme as what you might find in say Canada or, mm -hmm. or the yeah. upper United States. So. Yeah. No living up here in Iowa. I don't envy the productions that shoot in the winter up here in like Chicago and that, cause oh, yeah. that, that's just gotta be miserable. Yeah. It gets a lot colder than it does here typically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess kind of branching off of that, what are like some things productions coming in from out of state should be keeping in mind when looking at using Utah as a location and then like building out their, their filming schedule, especially since like you said, you have four seasons here. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of production companies will take that into account and kind of work backwards from, you know, typically Thanksgiving holiday, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're, if they're trying to get a certain number of days filming in and, and have a prep schedule, um, they'll certainly take that into account, and, you know, work backwards to, to figure out their start dates. Um, 
and you know obviously with the sag strike that's currently happening now that it's going to affect um our our fall filming season you know if that's not resolved yeah. more quickly so i hope they're able to work something out but um you know if it, we do get a lot of productions that are actually looking for snow and i've seen some come in and try filming in january and february but really um you know, March and April are when it's uh, more agreeable to film, I think, in snowy climates. Um, a lot of times the ski resorts will be slowing down or some will even close. And um, you know, ski, ski resorts have, you know, chairs and uh, snow cats and things that can get you to upper elevations yep. um, to kind of chase the snow if you need to. Um, and... You know, the, the private ones are easier to work with than, than, say, some of the, you know, U.S. Forest Service lease lands. Um, and those are all things to, you know, consider if you're looking for snow um, and filming in a snowy environment. Um, it does get hot in southern Utah in the summer. Uh, you know, it'd be smarter to shoot southern Utah in the other three seasons outside of summer. <laughs> but it, it does occur. And the... Uh, you know, there's certainly ways to keep cool on set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a dry heat. So okay, we'll say that's it's not good. as bad as, yeah, it's not as bad as when it's hot and humid. We don't get much humidity here and I'm pretty arid. Going to start kind of wrapping things up here. Okay. Um, my first kind of wrap up question for you is, are there certain things that the film office and commission can help with, but filmmakers seem to forget you guys can actually help them with this. You know, it kind of depends on if you're old school or not, I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so a lot of the younger filmmakers are uh, more apt to maybe send a text than they are to make a call <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or not reach out at all. Just, you know, doing their own research online. Uh, we're here as a resource with however we can help. Um, you know, I try to take it to the point of doing anything I can that's not taking a job away from someone in the industry. You know, I can't, you know, fill out your permit application, but I can certainly direct you to that source or send a, a full list of locations, department people, you know. Yep. Um, and so uh, one of the services our, off our office offers for productions that are serious about um, – about Utah is we'll, we'll, we'll offer a, um, you know, as long as they, the director and producer or maybe a DP or production designer gets out here, we'll kind of take care of them for a few days and show them around the state and show them, you know, script specific locations and do what I like to call the broad brushstrokes tour. So not out to find your specific locations, but I can certainly, you know, um, help paint a broad picture of what to expect while you're in Utah. So, okay. So a lot of people aren't familiar. I, I mean, there are a lot of people that come out here from the industry for Sundance, which I feel like mm -hmm. that's, you know, a uh, unique thing to have one of, you know, North America's largest uh, film festivals in your backyard. Right. Um, you know, where the industry comes to us. So, you know, most of the people that I work with, uh, you know, producers that are first time filmmakers in the state, they say, well, I've been to Sundance. <laughs> I've seen Park City, you know, mm -hmm. but that's about it. And, you know, we've, we've got a lot of other square miles <laughs> to cover so with a lot of different looks. So then, and you, you mentioned, mentioned this to me just before we started recording, but yeah. uh, there's actually a second technically film commission in the state of Utah. Um, yeah kind of like share what the differences are, how, how the two kind of work together or like what, you know, what filmmakers need to take to you guys versus the other one. Yeah. So um, we are, uh, are, we're the state film office, the Utah film commission, and we handle the, the film incentive. Um, we're also, you know, over the entire state, but they're, and I should mention, because we're about to celebrate a, a milestone, we're um, next year will be our 50th year as a, as a film commission. Nice. We were established in 1974. And um, we are also celebrating 100 years of filmmaking in the state of Utah. Um, the other film commission is the Moab to Monument Valley Film Commission, 
which is an office of one currently. Uh, Bega Metzner is their their director, and they will be celebrating next year seventy five years as a film commission. So they predate our our office's uh, start. They were established back in the day when. Um, you know, John Ford and John Wayne were shooting all the Westerns down in that area. Mm-hmm. So, so um, I think they they lay the claim to one of the longest running uh, film commissions in the, in North America. Okay. But yeah, so when a film filmmaker comes to us, if they're looking at, you know, red lot, red rock locations, we of course would suggest Moab as, as uh, one of the destinations to check out, but we'd also, have them look at places like central Utah and, and uh, you know, Kanab and um, St. George in the Southwest corner of the state. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd most likely put him in contact with Bega down at the Moab to Monument Valley film commission. And, and I'm sure she'd take really great care of them. So they, they have a long history of film making down there and, and we've shared several projects that have shot in other parts of the state and, and then also in Moab. Okay. Yeah, oh. I I've been down there once for a vacation with the family. So oh, cool! It's a cool yeah. area to. It's really unique to go yeah. see. Yeah, I kind of consider it. Um, it's almost like adventure filmmaking, mm-hmm. if you will. You know, it's like vacation filmmaking because there are so many activities you can do outside of your your work hours while you're down there. In fact, I had a producer one time. Um, it complained to me <laughs> that that the crew was coming in on Monday so tired because they spent every you know all, all this time on their weekends like ATVing and hiking and and mountain biking and running the river and you know all the fun things and you know rock climbing and all the fun things you can do down there. So. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely be doing it too. Uh, I, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy that when I get to travel for projects. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So then I guess what's a piece of advice you would give to a filmmaker who's working with say you guys for the very first time and they have no concept of, you know, what a film commission can all help them with and stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, if they were, I guess, new to filmmaking in general or, or if they have not worked with a film commission before, um, you know, I think it's important to kind of establish, you know, what we can and also what we can't do, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I think I mentioned earlier in the segment, in the segment that, you know, I don't want to take the job of a, of a crew member um, or have you rely on me so much that it's like I'm working for you because <laughs> I have other projects too, <laughs> yep. you know, but, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to help whenever I can. Uh, you know, it's like I, I, my mobile's in my email um, you know, so I get calls outside of work hours all the time. Um, you know, we're a great, uh, resource for, especially when it comes to something that's government related, you know, um, if I can help by making connections to certain areas that, that you might be looking at, like other, other towns or cities or, or counties, mm-hmm. um, usually we have a, some pretty good relationships with with um, you know other government entities um i can usually just we're i like to think of our office as the the grease between the gears you know okay i'm going to help things keep moving and and can make those key introductions or um or just su- some simple suggestions you know we're um that you know like i like to consider myself a creative as well yeah um you know, I come from the film industry. There's two of us in the office that, you know, come directly from the film industry and we're here to help, you know, um, we've, we've probably crossed that road before and may have a a great suggestion for you. If the project's, you know, running into a dead end or having, having some sort of issue or trouble, um, you know, we, we like to help however we can. Uh, my final question is just, where can people go to find the Utah film commission online or get in touch with you guys if they're looking at bringing their next shoot to your state? Sure. Yeah. So our website is, is probably the best resource. It's film.utah.gov or gov. Um, 
no WW required. So yeah, but if you just type in Utah Film Commission, Google will get you there pretty quickly too. But um, yeah, on our locations or, you know, on our site, we have, like I mentioned, over 2000 locations of various all throughout the state. We have a pretty robust uh, uh, crew directory as well as a support services directory for just about anything you can think of. Um, you know, I, th I think we're pretty turnkey here in, in the state of Utah. We're only, I think, from portal to portal, we're 90 minutes, um, you know, from runway to runway, um, white from Los Angeles. Of course, just one time zone away. Um, mm -hmm. Like I mentioned before, you can cheat us for a lot of different areas. There's a lot of different looks you can achieve here. Um, we have four seasons. Uh, we have several crew, um, multiple vendors, you know, lots of, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to have to bring in all my equipment. I'm going to have to bring in all my trailers. It's not not the case. You know, we have a um, a lot of equipment that vendors with multiple camera and grip and electric vendors. We have several uh, start like trailers and and stake beds and and all the other uh, vehicles that you you know honey wagons, Pimos, all that. Um, you can find it here in Utah. Nice. Well, thank you very much, Derek, for uh, taking the time to, to share about uh, filming in Utah and what you guys at the Utah Film Commission uh, can do to help uh, producers on their next project. Mike, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for, for reaching out. And hopefully this leads to people finding locations in Utah. And with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of The Producer Podcast. Join us next time as we travel south and talk to the Moab to Monument Valley Film Commission, also located in the beautiful state of Utah. Until then, make sure to subscribe to The Producer Podcast, and thanks for listening.